Welcome back to the Ant-Man channel on this Sunday, the 27th of January, 2013. Uh, got another article here under the WND Education. Yeah, under yeah, WD Education. You can go look at this up for yourself, WND.com. Appeals Blast. Appeal Blast Judges Religious Phobia. Excuse me. Appeal Blast Judges Religious Phobia by Bob Unra. Decision Mandates Hostility to Christian Church by Bob Unra. I already introduced Bob Unra today once. And he writes, An appeals court decision that barred high school students from holding their graduation ceremony at a church building shows hostility toward religion and should be reversed by the U.S. Supreme Court because it violates the U.S. Constitution, charges a team of legal experts. The Alliance Defending Freedom says the ruling by the 7th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals mandates hostility to religion and puts the free exercise rights to, of students at risk. Church buildings should, be not, should not be uh, treated like toxic warehouses simply because they're, they normally house religious activities. That has never been the intent of the First Amendment, said ADF Senior Counsel David Cortman. On the contrary, as the judges who descended on the Seventh Circuit's opinion said, this opinion clearly exhibits an unconstitutional hostility toward religion. The government isn't being neutral toward religion when it treats it worse. The dispute arose over a plan by high school seniors in the Elbrook, Wisconsin school district to hold graduation ceremonies in a facility superior to their cramped school gym, which is not air-conditioned and has wooden benches wooden benches. They found an alternative at the nearby Elmbrook Church, which could easily accommodate all of their guests, even those with disabilities, and offended amenities, amenities like cushioned seating, free parking, and temperature control. The rental price of the church was also less expensive than holding the graduation ceremony in the school's antiquated gym. The senior said, School officials approved the proposal, but offended students and their parents sue, and the full appellate court overturned decisions by its own panel in a lower court which ruled that allowing the rental arrangement for the convenience and comfort of the students was reasonable. The majority ruled in the face of multiple and extensive dissent that holding high school graduation ceremonies in the Elmbrook Church sanctuary conveys an imper impermissible message of endorsement. ADF now is asking the Supreme Court to walk that back because the Seventh Circuit's decision severely comprom compromises public schools' ability to rent private ven venues for secular purposes and threatens to derail valuable educational programs that depend upon religious neutrality neutru 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 uh, for survival. Given the magnitude of the Seventh Circuit's legal errors and the significance of their real-world impact, this court should grant review to vindicate the Establishment Clause's true intent, ADF contends. The opinion of the full Seventh Circuit, says ADF, takes the district's practical solution to a real-world problem and manufactures a constitutional morass. The ADF brief points out the extent of the morass. Individual... Students may, for example, read the final stanza of Father Maple's or Maple's beautiful hymn in chapter 9 of Moby Dick, which concludes, I give the glory to my God, his all the mercy and all the power, and be moved to meditate or mediate privately upon the own desire to give the glory to their God. This does not turn the secular study of Moby Dick into an endorsement of religion, the brief explains. If neutrality is no longer relevant and private persuasion violates the Establishment Clause, school districts must extinguish this expression to avoid ta tainting their secular pursuits. Nothing in the Constitution allows such hostility to religious speech, the brief argues. It says the appeals ruling reflects bias and irrational feelings by suggesting the Church should have modified its speech to be more inviting to others. Such reasoning smacks more of religious phobia than legitimate establishment class concerns, ADF argues. Not only does the Seventh Circuit's opinion contravene the establishment clause by mandating antagonism toward religion, it also requires school districts to discriminate amongst religious sects.
The court suggested the district might be allowed to host the ceremony in the church that lacked the pro proselytizing elements pro present in this case. The criticism of, of Elmbrook Church Church was that it was pervasively Christian. The court said dissenting uh, judges at the Seventh Circuit were blunt. They, uh, the likely effects of today's decision will be first to confirm the view of many religious Americans that the courts are hostile to religion, second to, infu to infuriate students and their families by depriving them of the best site for their high school graduation, and third to initiate what federal law does not need, a jurisprudence of permissible versus impermissible retails rentals of church space to public schools and other public entities wrote judge richard posner the majority opinion leaves open the possibility that if the high school burned down and the church only uh, church were the only feasible site for holding classes while the school was out of commission such a public use of religious property would be permissible an emergency exemption to the rule laid down today is appropriate but the list of exemptions won't end there what if the school didn't burn down but only the gym? And what if thinking their principal com competitor, Elmbrook Church, had been eliminated from consideration as the substitute venue for the graduation? The owners of alternative venues raised their rental price and the church responded by lowering its price. Could the high school then, in this period of dis diminished public school budgets, plead economic necessity for continuing to hold its graduation ceremony in the church? Um, don't really know what all this is about, to be honest with you, but all I know is that in our public schools nowadays, excuse me, in our public schools nowadays, our kids are growing up in a very secular, uh, school, um, the way the things are in the schools, uh, yeah, it's very secular to our kids, and, um, they are under a lot of pressure, man. If you're a Christian and you got Christian kids and they go to public school, man, pray for them because they're under attack most of the time. You got people telling them to just be good little slaves all day. You got the uh, trendy kids making fun of them all day because if you're not a trendy and your head isn't totally 100% up your butt and all you do is watch MTV, then you're weird. You're a weirdo if you don't because that's what the that's what the uh, that's what the stereotype is for uh, being informed, being smart, being an honor, being a very noble person. You know, you get called weird because the MTV culture of dumbed down idiots in the public schools are the majority. They are they are the big groups of people in school. I didn't grow up Christian. I didn't I didn't grow up in high school uh, honoring God. You know, unfortunately, you know, I, I lived a very secular life for a very long time. But all the glory to God for, you know, the way that I am now. Um, you know, that's what your kids are under nowadays. You know, you're not allowed to praise God in school. You don't get you don't get respected by anybody. Um, you're living in the world of secularism now. And and if you believe in if you have faith in God, you get you get stereotyped as a caveman or a nut job or something bad it's always something bad but my own friends man unfortunately make fun of me in front of me man for the things that i believe in and yeah it grieves me it does because it's not it's not me that i'm really sad for it's just i hate to see people victimized by the lies of the world and um this is all out of fear that you are under this that you are in the matrix it's out of fear of knowing the truth the truth is not all that scary, you guys. It's very good to know the truth. Don't be afraid, man. Know that all this stuff is good. Start peeking into it, man. Start asking the Lord to unveil, you know, all this stuff to you. And I and I believe, man, I believe that God is that good, that whoever you are, man, if you just ask God to unveil your unveil the truth to you, that you will be much better off that way. And you will be so glad. You will be you will always be thankful for that, what you did, man. And I promise you, you'll never forget this. You'll never forget the day you decided to look into your soul and look into the reality of what is out there. And just, I don't know, you guys, you know, like we're under attack. And the more that I see my brothers suffering for their faith, 
it just increases mine. It makes me less selfish. It makes me less. It makes me care less about myself and makes me care more about every one of you guys out there because I'm I'm in good hands already, man. But I am just more compelled with the more I see the Christian church getting prosecuted by the secular wicked world that we live in, man. It makes me really want to reach out to you guys and say it is all right, man. It is all for the greater good of the kingdom of God and that we're all in good hands, man. If only you come into the covenant that Jesus Christ had with his own blood paid for all of us to just live in victory and live as kings on this earth. Live a supernatural life of abundance, man, instead of living in fear. It's okay, man. It's okay. That's all I got to say to you atheists and all you unbelievers out there, that it is okay. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to worry about, man. If only you come to Christ.